Hi there, this is Unmesh from Piximperfect and today we can learn how to add beautiful clouds to your amazing landscapes in Photoshop and that too in a way that it completely changes the mood. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are in Photoshop and first of all, let us import the photo. So it's a raw image. So how do we do that? Well, simple. Just to minimize Photoshop, drag it and drop it into Photoshop just like that. Now, since this is a raw photo, it opens up in Adobe Camera Raw. By the way, this photo was submitted by Andy Badillo. Thank you so much, Andy, for this beautiful, spectacular image. Really appreciate your contribution. All right, so let's have a look at this. As soon as I open this raw photo into Photoshop, some adjustments have already been made. How is that possible? It is possible because I previously already opened that up in Adobe Camera Raw yesterday and I did some adjustments. Now, anytime you open up an image, a raw image into Photoshop and it opens up in Adobe Camera Raw and you make some adjustments, it saves those adjustments in a sidecar file. In other words, in an XMP file. So if I open that folder, have a look, there is this lakefrontwinter36.xmp. This file gets created anytime I make an adjustment in Adobe Camera Raw, so that the next time I open that image, open that raw image specifically, those adjustments are already done inside of Photoshop. So in this image particularly, I didn't do much of an adjustment. So the technique that we're gonna be using, that technique requires the sky to be as bright as possible, possibly white, because we're gonna use the blend mode multiply. Now this is not the only way to do it. This is just one of the ways to do it. So I have two other videos on replacing the skies. Check out these videos right over there. It will be linked in the description. All right, so let's have a look at the highlights. We will take it all the way to the right. Why? Because we want the sky to be bright. When you use the multiply blend mode, multiply blend mode always darkens stuff. So you want to make sure that the sky is already bright white completely white. All right, so I will open up the shadows. I already did that white. I took down the blacks and that's what I did. I didn't touch the exposure and the contrast, maybe increased the tint a little bit. So if you look at the before, if I go to camera raw defaults, not much of a difference. So let's go back control or command Z. And that's pretty much it. Now let's click on open image. If you want to work on 16 bit, you can do that as well. Just click on in here and choose 16 bit. We're going to work on 8 bit because that's a little faster and hit OK. But if you're commercially doing something, if you want it to be super high quality, then you might choose 16 bit. Click on open image. So first of all, as you can see, the image is a little tilted. We need to straighten it up. So how do we straighten it? Very simple. Press C. C for the crop tool. OK, now when you make the crop tool active and these handles show up, at the top, there is this tool called straighten, very suggestive. Just click on that icon and you get the tool. All you have to do, just draw a line along a line, which you think should have been straight horizontally or vertically. So in this case, we will take the horizontal line into consideration right over here. So this line right over there should have been straight when this was being photographed. So simply I'll just click and drag along this line, just like this. Okay, let's extend it a bit. Okay, and leave it down to Photoshop. What Photoshop does is that, okay, that is straight. I need to make that straight. And along with that, the whole image gets straightened. And once that is done, hit enter. Now, when you do that, always make sure that delete cropped pixels is checked off. Why is it checked off? Because we don't want to delete any pixels. So if you want some details back from this side, which we are losing, while rotating it, you will have them. So please do not check delete crop pixels beforehand. All right. Now then there is another content aware tool. Now what is the advantage of this? Let me show you. Let me go back and let me show you the advantage of this. Now I usually keep it checked off because it creates extra pixels, but you can keep that checked on. Let me show you what it does. Okay. Let's go back. Let's just not straighten it up. Let's go back. Press C again. Now this makes the crop tool active. However, if you do not see the handles around, just click on the middle once. Do not click and drag, just click once, okay? Then you'll see these handles. Now, if you check content aware and then you rotate it, let's go to straighten again and then just uh, draw the line which we drew before, just like that. No big deal, done. Now, as you can see, there's a little bit of extension over here, right? Extension more than the image and it's going transparent. What you can do, you can really extend it to your heart's content like that. And these areas will be filled by the content aware. Okay, hit enter. 
and quantitative FL will take care of it. And have a look at this. It does some math, does some content aware, tries to fill up these areas, make some calculations. Have a look. It filled those areas. Amazing, isn't it? All right. Now we need to add the clouds. How do we add the clouds? Just to bring in the clouds. But before we do bring in the clouds, always make a copy of this layer because we don't want to harm this layer and we will be painting and smudging and doing all sorts of stuff. So let's make a copy of it. We want a backup. Press Control or Command J. You can name this one landscape if you want to. Just for organization purposes. Now, let's bring in the clouds. Okay, so we'll go to the same folder and just drag it and drop it over the canvas. Okay, not inside of another tab over the canvas. This will open that up in a smart object. Okay, now let's drag it all the way up just like this. Now, since the sky is very bright, we can use the blend mode multiply because multiply is a blend mode which darkens stuff. The bright areas in the sky will simply not show up and the background sky will show up in that case. And the background is white, so we don't need to worry about that. Okay, hit enter once you think it's right and change the blend mode from normal to multiply. There we go. The second category is all about darkening. Darken, multiply, color burn, everything. Every blend mode in the second category is about darkening. So let's choose multiply. And as you can see, this already looks amazing. Of course, we need to do some adjustments, but that's okay. Now, one thing I need you to put your head around is that have a look at the water. Let's just turn it off for a second. This is moving water. This water doesn't have any reflection. Whenever the water is moving with a fast pace and you don't have much reflection. Reflection is clear when the water is still. So in this case, the water is not still at all. So you don't need to worry about reflection. So if I turn this on, there's a kind of this texture or you can say this reflection kind of effect created, but we don't need it over there. Okay, so we need to smudge it out, blow it out. Do not worry about that. And by the way, if you want to learn how to create highly realistic reflections, I have two videos on that. Check these videos out. Links in the description. All right, so let's make a copy of this one. Press Control or Command J and then press Control or Command T, we need to flip it out, right click on it and flip vertical. Just like a reflection, I'll just place it. Now you might ask, why didn't you place this line over here? It should be over here, right in there along the horizontal line. The thing is, it doesn't matter at all because anyway, we're gonna be merging and smudging and just blurring out the reflection because there's no reflection because of the moving water, all right? Hit enter. Now we need to merge these two layers. We cannot keep them separate. To merge these two layers, hold the control or command, select the other one, make sure both of them are selected and then press control or command E, okay? And then simply all you have to do once you merge them, the blend modes are gone. So again, change the blend mode from normal to multiply. Where is multiply? There it is. I actually lost track of that. Now let's make a copy of this one as well. Just as a backup, it's important. Control or Command J and simply turn this off. We don't need that anymore and you don't have to do it if you're completely sure, but always make sure you have a backup. And you can name this whatever you like. Let's name it Clouds. Okay, all right. Now the top portion looks fine. We need to take care of the bottom portion. So as I said, we need to blur this out. So let's make a selection of the water. So the best way to do it in this case is using the quick mask mode. So to enter the quick mask mode, select the brush, make sure the cloud layer is selected and then press Q. This takes you into quick mask mode. Now anything which I paint, you see this red over there? That area is being selected or not selected. Is it confusing? I think it is. So I painted this area just like this. If I press Q again, it takes me out of quick mask mode. And as you can see, this area is selected. Okay. Now it might be completely opposite for you. Let's press control or command D to deselect that. If you go to the quick mask options by double clicking over here, you see the color indicates either masked areas or selected areas. Masked areas means the areas which are not selected. Selected areas means the areas are selected in the area that you paint. So right now the selected area is selected. Okay, don't get confused. Selected area is selected and the color we have chosen red, red works fine. Opacity 50 and this is just for representation. Okay, hit okay. If I paint and then if I press Q, that area is selected. 
However, let's press Ctrl or Command D. Double click on this. If you choose masked area, hit OK. Paint and then press Q. Everything except that area will be selected. So I have already chosen selected areas. By default, it might be masked area. So make sure you change that to selected areas and hit OK. That's quite easier. But then again, depends on how you roll. That's how I roll. All right. So let's make a selection of this. Let's increase the flow. It's 20. Let's make it 100. Okay. That works. Now let's paint a little bit around the edges. So let's zoom in. And we will paint right here like that. Just click once. Let me give you a tip. Click once like that. And if you hold the shift key and click on the other end, it makes a straight line. Isn't that amazing? So just click, hold the shift key, click on the other side. Boom, done. So it really helps you draw straight lines into Photoshop. Okay, don't get outside of this. We don't need to blur the sky. Do not blur the sky. Okay, now if you want to erase and if you have painted some extra areas, it's simple to do that as well. So change the color from black to white. So once we paint over here, we'll do that. Press X to toggle between the black and the whites or the foreground and the background. And then just erase these areas. Make the brush a little bigger, softer, and simply erase these areas like that. Okay, that looks wonderful. Now let's zoom out by pressing Ctrl or Command minus, and then press Q again. As you can see, that area is selected. All you have to do, go to Filter, Blur, either choose Gaussian Blur or choose Average. What Average does is that it takes an average. It makes an average of all of the colors which are inside that and makes it completely flat. So you can choose average, you can also choose Gaussian Blur. So I'm going to go ahead and choose average because we don't want any kind of uh, texture in over there. So this is average. So what that does, if I change the blend mode to normal, have a look. It completely made an average color of that particular area. Let's go back and let's try Gaussian Blur as well. So filter, blur, Gaussian Blur. Now this video is going to be a little longer because I'm going to show you all the options and explain you everything. So Gaussian Blur is going to look something like this. You can increase the blur to as much as you like, something like this. Now this also gives it a very nice effect if you're looking for that. This area is a little blue, that area is a little different color. So you can just experiment with it. I like this as well. Let's apply a 900 pixel blur and hit OK. That looks fine as well. As you can see, it's taking time. Yes, of course, it's Gaussian Blur. Then press Ctrl or Command D. And if you change that to normal back again, have a look. It's a little different. This area is a little darker. This is brighter. It gives a nice fade to it. So if you're into that, definitely go for it. If I just turn that back into Multiply, and there you go. That looks wonderful. Now, it's looking okay. There's a couple of areas which we need to improve. So in the background, as you saw, there was this cloud. It's looking fine over here if I just turned it off. It looks fine over here, but at this area, if I turn this on, this cloud, the background cloud is kind of distracting the clouds which are in the front. So how do we take that away? Simply select the landscape, take the brush and just simply erase those. If I turn this off, take a sample and start erasing those. Now, if you want to keep this clouds into view and do that, if I just turn that off and if you take a sample, it will take the blue sample. It will take a sample of the clouds as well. So you want to take a sample from the current layer, just the current layer, which is the landscape with the clouds visible. How do we do that? Select the eyedropper tool and change the sample from all layers to current layer. You can also change the sample size to 3x3 three three or 5x5. Five five. What that does is that if you choose 5x5, five five, it makes a square of 5x5 five five pixels and then takes an average of that color instead of sampling just one pixel. Okay. So make sure the landscape is selected, take the brush and then sample, just paint on a couple of areas, just dab, paint, done. You don't have to do super duper bizarre in these areas, just dab some areas. Now you might be able to figure out that this area is done, we have just retouched that area. But if you show that to some other person, he won't be able to figure that out. Okay, that looks wonderful. Now. Let's have a look at this area. This area is a little disturbing. So we need to take care of this lighthouse as well. So similarly, do the same thing. Let's go to the clouds adjustment layer. Hit Q to enter into the quick mask mode. Then zoom in and let's make a selection of this lighthouse. With the brush, if you paint nothing happens, make sure the foreground color is black. 
and then simply paint like that. And use the same trick, click once over here, hold the shift key, click, click, and then click like that and fill the inside of it. Simple, very simple. Okay, that looks wonderful. Now make sure everything is filled in properly. See, we went a little extra. So how do we tackle that? Press X and then erase it. Click once, hold the shift key and click on the other side. That's taken care of. And then press Q to make a selection of that and simply filter, blur and then Gaussian blur. Now you can apply as much blur as you like, but I'm gonna go ahead, apply a little less blur like this 36 let's go a little up 150 let's go 150 and hit ok press ctrl or command d now have a look at this that has been solved as well now if you want the shine on the right hand side which has gone if you turn this off there was a shine on the right hand side why was there a shine and why has this been lost because we chose multiply and multiply dark and stuff it also took away the shine so just turn it on and create a mask as simple as that okay so click on the mask button and then take the brush make sure the foreground color is black so how do we do that press x to toggle between the foreground and the background so i deselected the brush by mistake so select the brush press x and then just simply paint on the shine so click once again do the same trick click once right over here make sure you're not painting on the sky let's make the brush a little smaller like this click once and we'll go all the way to the top and click like that Okay. Now actually we erased too much so we need to bring the clouds back in some of the white areas So how do we do that change the color again to white? What is the concept of mask white shows black hides black conceals white reveals? So take white and simply just click once over here and Hold the shift key click. Okay. Now that is looking great now as you can see it's very very bright Here's how we tackle that select the mask open up the properties of the mask. If you cannot see the properties, go to Windows and then choose Properties right over there. Okay, click on Properties, make sure that is checked and simply decrease the density. What that does, it actually fades the mask. So as you can see, if I just make the mask visible by holding the Alt or Option and click on the mask, there's this black line over there, which means that area hides. If I decrease the density, it just makes it faded. Hold the Alt or Option, click on the mask again to see the effect in real time. So this is all the way to zero. Let's increase it. Now that looks wonderful. Now you can work your way and turn it off and have a look at how the edges are contoured and work your way on it. But to me, it looks fine. I'll just zoom out and simply turn this on. Okay. Now we have that if you want that extra shine here as well so you can bring it up over here so with the mask selected brush small and then click once with black we want to hide that click once do that here as well okay if you want to do it here you can do that here as well and uh, we are pretty much done with that okay now let's take care of the water the water is not shining well it's not looking as nice as it should so we need to bring in the shine how do we bring in the shine? Simple. Select the landscape layer and make a copy of that. Control or Command J. And you can name this whatever you like, landscape shine or water shine. Let's name this water shine. Organization is very important. Water, whoops, water shine. Okay, let's take it above the clouds. Now you might think, what am I doing? <laughs> Here's what I'm doing. I'm just making this layer visible in the bright areas and only in the water and how can we do that using blend if simple just double click on the right hand side of the layer this opens up the layer styles dialog box let's take the slider of the underlying layer from left to right this makes the dark areas of the underlying layer invisible so whatever is there in the underlying layer or whatever is there in the layer beneath the current layer, any dark area in the underlying layer will be deleted from the current layer. So if you take this to the right, the dark areas of the underlying layer is being deleted from this layer. So just watch the water, do not watch the sky. I know the sky is bright and we will erase that later. Just watch the water. 
that is fine but that is very harsh hold the alt or option click on it and break it and have a look now that looks like something can adjust it to your liking like that and once you're satisfied with it okay I'm gonna go something like this I like it and hit OK now we need to apply it just to the water so create a mask let's create a negative mask how to create a negative mask hold the alt or option and then click on the mask button now you might ask what is a negative mask a negative mask is a mask which comes pre-filled with black so we can simply take the brush and just fill the water with white so make this area visible any area where you want the shine so we'll fill the complete area like that and it looks wonderful make sure to delete this from the sky press X and erase it from this particular area we don't want it over there we just want it over here okay that looks wonderful now the color is not very accurate as you can see the color of the sky is orange bluish so we need to change the color how do we change the color simple add a curves adjustment layer click on the adjustment layer icon and choose curves now as you can see if I make any changes to the curves adjustment layer it makes a change to the complete image we don't want that we want to limit that to water shine layer so how do we limit that we can do that by creating a clipping mask now there are two ways to create a clipping mask one easy way is just click on this button it limits that you see that arrow which means that it is affecting just this layer and the underline over there it shows that is the target now if you make a change just this area gets affected now let me show you one more way of doing that let's go back control alt Z command option Z okay another way is by holding the alt or option and clicking on the line between these two so if you click on that line see this thing is created again now anytime you want to break the clipping mask hold the alt or option bring your cursor between these two lines and see the clipping mask icon with the cancel shows up it actually breaks it hold the alter option click on it again it brings it back all right now let's add some orange to this so simply go to blue and let's start simple so first let's add some yellow then we will add some red and make it a little orangish so we will decrease the blues why will we decrease the blues to add yellows remember yellow is the opposite of blue red is the opposite of cyan green is the opposite of magenta so RGB CMY red opposite of cyan green opposite of magenta blue opposite of yellow all right so let's decrease the blues just like that okay now that is getting yellowish but it's also getting greenish so we will go to greens and decrease the greens as well now we are going somewhere okay now let's go to reds and let's try increasing this fellow okay I think we decrease the green too much we'll just have to increase it a bit like that I kind of like it let's have a look before after before after that looks wonderful at any time you can make the changes this is non destructive so you can make the changes in the curves adjustment layer anytime you want now this is beginning to look good let's add a solid color adjustment layer and add an orange tone to the water so click on the adjustment layer icon and choose solid color and choose any color you want and hit OK all you have to do is just turn it off double click on it again and then take a sample of this orange color now it's not taking a sample of that why is it not taking a sample of orange color because we changed that to current layer change that back to all layers and take a sample of this orange color okay all right that looks wonderful hit OK and then turn it on do the same thing double click on the right hand side of the layer and then take the slider of the underlying layer from left to right and make it just visible on these areas hold the alter option click on this and we will make it like that now that looks wonderful now hit ok and change the blend mode to screen because we just want to brighten it we don't want to accidentally darken it so screen is a blend mode which brightens stuff so the first category is about darkening the second category is about brightening so lighten screen everything about brightening so choose screen this brighten stuff now select the mask okay control or command I take the brush make the areas visible in only some areas that you want just dab into this area you want it shine in this area this area probably this area 
and you really can customize it the way you like. Now let's change the color. Double click on it, double click on the icon of the solid color adjustment layer. And suppose I want to increase the saturation. So I would move to S, which stands for saturation, and then increase the saturation like that. Maybe you want to increase the brightness. I'll just increase that or maybe decrease it. That's totally upon you. You can change the hue to your liking as well. Just like that. Okay, that looks wonderful. Hit OK. Now, if you're satisfied with this, okay, if you're not satisfied with this, you can just always play with the color and the opacity. You can decrease the opacity if you like. I'll just go ahead and increase it to 66 and maybe I'll go with the curves. And how's the opacity? It's 100%. Let's increase the yellow. It's blue. Let's take it even more down like that. Let's try decreasing the greens like this. And let's try increasing the reds. Now that looks like something. Let's have a look at the before and after. So this is the after and this is the before. After, before, after, before. Okay, what are the other changes that we need to make? As you saw, we already made changes in the highlights. Since in the highlights we had yellows, we just applied yellows and the oranges to the highlights of the water. But what about the shadows? In the shadows, there should be what? Blue? Why blue? Because as you can see in the sky, the dark areas are blue. Always remember, the water always mimics the sky. Okay, so let's create another color fill, solid color adjustment layer, and then choose any color, just hit OK. Turn it off, double click on it, and sample any dark blue or whatever color that you like. Hit OK, and turn this on. Change the blend mode this time to multiply because we are darkening stuff. Change it to multiply, and it completely does that. Double click on the right hand side of the layer and take the slider of the underlying layer from right to left. We are doing just the opposite. We want to make this layer invisible from the bright areas. So take it like that and just make it available in the dark areas. Now this is harsh. Hold the Alt or Option click on it and do it like that. And make it just visible on the water. Select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I and take the brush with the brush just paint on the water and that's it. Now this is very dark. We need to make changes in color. Select the color, double click on it, and let's brighten it. So if I take it, brighten it, okay, that looks wonderful. Just darken it a little bit. Saturation, do you want it to be saturated a bit? You can play with this. Just match with this area. Hue, so you can change the hue to your liking. This makes it green, we don't want green. We want blue, that area, look, that looks good. Brightness, we might want to increase it. Hit OK. Now let's decrease the opacity. We don't want so much of an opacity. Just a little bit. 60%, that's fine. And there you go. Let's have a look at this. Always zoom out to get a complete picture of the image and see whether it blends in well, whether the color looks right or not. Now at the end, what you can do to mix and match all of it up, you can apply an effect to the overall image. So you can apply any effect that you like. I'm going to go ahead and choose color lookup table. So click on the adjustment layer and we will choose color lookup and choose any one that you like. There are tons of them to choose from, drop blues, tons of them. You can choose anything that, this looks wonderful, foggy night. I'm totally in love with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose late sunset. Now this is too much. What, what I would suggest you to do, just decrease the opacity. You don't have to have so much of an opacity. Wow, now that looks like something. Let's go 40 and it looks wonderful. Let's go 35. Now you'll make this change this time and again. And I would highly suggest you to take a break and then come back and then have a look at this, how that looks. Whether Sometimes what happens is when you take a break and then you come back, you might wonder, you might think to yourself, what the heck was I doing? And you begin to see the mistakes that you did. Okay, so take a break and have a look at that. I'm not taking a break. I think I need to decrease the opacity even more. 1620 is okay for this. Okay. Now you might also want to apply camera raw at the end and that can be effective as well. So first of all, let's fit the canvas to the screen. Press Ctrl or Command zero to do that. So that's a very handy tip. If you're zoomed in and you want to just fit it back in, press Ctrl or Command zero, it fits it. Now to do that, you will have to make a merged layer or a stamp visible layer. Press Ctrl Alt Shift E, Command Option Shift E. See what that does? It creates a merged layer of everything that you see in the canvas. Okay, You can name this whatever you like and I'm going to leave it at layer 1 and let's convert that into a smart object. Go to filter, 
convert for smart filters. Hit OK. Here's why. Here's the advantage of it. Now apply camera raw filter. There are two advantages of converting this into a smart object. Let me tell you the two. Number one advantage is if you make a change here, you can change that value later. So for example, you want to decrease the exposure. Wow. Maybe increase the clarity a little bit like that and open up the shadows. Wonderful. Take down the blacks and you can make as many changes as you like. You increase or decrease the highlights. That's totally upon you and make these changes. Probably decrease the vibrance. That's upon you. No matter what changes you make, hit OK. And if you make those changes, have a look at this. You can double click on the camera raw filter and you can get those changes back and you can change them anytime you like. Now that's the number one advantage. Now here's the number two advantage and that is where the trick lies. So anytime suppose you want to make change to the cloud. So you want to make change anywhere here, change to the color, whatever you like. Let's turn this off. Maybe you wanted to change the color lookup table or anything. Maybe change this color. So let's make a little change just for making a change purposes. So I'll just change the color lookups to say three strip. Okay. We made change there and we turned this merged layer off. So let's create a new blank layer and merge everything down again. Control Alt Shift E. Okay. Now you don't have to apply the camera raw filter again. In this one, you have already applied the same adjustments. So if you convert this into a smart object by going to filter, convert for smart filters, hit OK. You can copy the smart filter to this one. You can hold the Alt or Option, copy the smart filter to, to this one, and it automatically makes those adjustments. And you can simply delete the previous one. Just select it, press the delete key, and that's done. So there you go. That's just one of the ways of adding clouds and really change the mood of your landscape in Photoshop. Now there are tons of other ways of doing that. I already have a couple of videos so you can check the links in the description if you're interested. Just a quick little recap. In this image, first of all, we made sure that the sky is as bright as possible. So if I show you the before, we made sure that this is completely white so that when we apply multiply, the bright areas of the new clouds do not suffer. Okay. Then we brought the clouds in. We made a copy of that. We flipped it. We merged it and then changed the blend mode to multiply. Now, as you see, if I turn this off, there are a couple of inconsistencies over here. So we simply took the brush and painted those areas. And there we go. Now, since the water is moving, we cannot have any sharp reflections in there. At the same time, we cannot erase it because that way it will change the colors. It will bring back the original colors and that will not match with that of the sky. So we blurred that particular area. We made a selection of it and we blurred it. So I did it in another layer, just like that. And I erased these areas just to bring back some shine. And we might have to do that depending upon the image that we are working on. Suppose there are a couple of areas in your image which really requires the highlight shine. Or for example, there's a backlight. So there's a rim shine. That time you might want to create a mask and erase those areas. Okay. After that, we added the water shine by making a copy of the landscape at the top and applying blend if you made some changes using curves adjustment layer. We made some color adjustments. We add an orange tint, a blue tint to the shadows and to wrap it all up and make it look good as a wholesome image. You can add an overall effect. In that case, I applied a color lookup table and then at the end, you can also apply the camera raw filter, make a merge layer, convert that into a smart object and then camera raw. And here is the final result. So that's pretty much it for this video. Hope you like this. And if you did, make sure to give us a like. And also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss a thing. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice people for helping keep this channel free forever by supporting this channel on Patreon. Thank you so much, guys, for all the support. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.